A major theme of this course is that cities are people, not buildings. The real city is the connected humanity that inhabits skyscrapers, not the skyscrapers themselves. But still, the skyscrapers matter. And so does all of the built environment which defines a city's skyline. A city's buildings give it form and beauty, and they determine the city's affordability and access to jobs. Buildings have a lasting impact on cities, and a better understanding of the built environment enables us to better understand everything else about the city. The first question about the physical city is just why does a city look the way it does? Why do the structures on Chicago's Lakeshore Drive soar to the sky? And why is Paris comparatively flat? Why is Mumbai crowded but short, while Singapore has dispersed high-rise dwellings? Why is it so easy to find your way around New York and so easy to get lost in Sao Paulo? The answer to why a city has a certain shape can often lie in the answer to a second question. How do buildings impact the experience of urban life? These two questions are so related because buildings often come about to solve a particular urban problem. The dense warren of streets in older European cities were meant to enable transportation during a pedestrian era, and they still work better for walking than for driving. The third question is how should governments regulate urban form? Is there a right answer, a grid for every city? Or should modern cities be a little less monotonous? Is it right to limit height or to limit sprawl? The built environment may not be the city, but Churchill was right that first we shape our buildings, thereafter they shape us. Understanding both skyscrapers and the housing in slums is a crucial part of understanding our cities.